Coming up next, a UFC welterweight division matchup. tonight and he's so comfortable in the striking realm it's almost like he started kickboxing before he ever was reading or writing oh it's unbelievable to see someone that's so comfortable under so much duress i know when you're in kickboxing range you are in the fire there is no safety you're right in range to be getting knocked out but he does not fear that he loves it he loves the he loves the combat he loves the engagement but what you have to understand is not engaging his opponents on their turn. He's doing it on his turn. Whether or not he wants to be in close with the big punches or he wants to be at range landing kicks, he's just constantly putting damage on you. Top, bottom, up, low, it does not matter. This guy is a dominant striker, one of the best kickboxers the UFC has ever seen. And in terms of the punching technique and the jab, as good as anyone in this division. Well, always exciting when this guy shows up on the fight card, Daniel. He is a true mixed martial artist. Not really any glaring weaknesses, at least, that he's put on film thus far. He's the new breed of fighter. Those kids that start doing everything at six years old. They start wrestling, they start doing jiu-jitsu, they start to box. He's one of those guys that has every one of those skills and he does them all at an A-plus level. He's got tremendous cardio. He is the type of fighter that in a few years will just litter the UFC roster across the board. And oftentimes his opponents will say he doesn't really do anything special, but he does everything at a plus level and he believes he'll have a lot of advantages in this matchup tonight. Our tale of the tape for this welterweight fight. So two years, the gap in age, with some differences in height, but big differences in reach. All right, now for the particulars, he is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a kickboxer, holding a professional record of 24 wins, nine losses, and one no contest. He stands six feet three inches tall, weighing in at 170 pounds, fighting out of Fort Worth, Texas, Kevin the Trailblazer Holland. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist, holding a professional record of 14 wins, two losses. He stands 5 feet 11 inches tall, weighing in at 170 pounds, fighting out of Perth, Australia, Jack Della Madalena! And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Dan Mergliata. Dan Mergliata. You ready? Right, so lofty expectations for this matchup as round one gets underway. Seems to be a striking advantage on one side, but on the other, truly a fighter who can do it. And that guy will usually have the advantage on paper. When you're oh! Big elbow! Oh, he might be out. It's one thing to have an edge in reach. It's another to take advantage. Nicely done. Stuffs the takedown there. How good is his takedown defense? Another clinch position. Nice punch lands over the top. Just unable to quite find that range. He engages in a single collar tie here. Stuffs that takedown attempt without issue. Takedown attempt is good. Close guard. All right, he's very comfortable fighting off his back, DC. Now looks like he's trying to hip escape. Yeah, he's trying to hip escape or maybe look for a Kimura here. Well, you know, I don't like the gi very much, but I have an appreciation and a healthy one for these type of transitions. You can tell he's been in a gi at some point in his life with the way that he moves so freely. I'm skipping jujitsu next week, too. <laughs> oh, he's got. 
got the ground and pound going now. All right, well, both fighters pretty comfortable on the ground, DC, but you gotta be very careful hanging out here for too long if you're his opponent. Well, these are some excellent ground and pound strikes here, DC. There's an efficiency with which he operates in these situations. He knows exactly when to throw, exactly when to hold, and it's allowing him to really control the grappling aspect of the fight. There's a song there, right? Know when to hold him, know when, when to, to hold him. him. Yep, there you absolutely. Go. Posturing up now. And now the damage is about to start. Well, any time you are in a ground fighting situation with this fighter, you're potentially playing with fire. Oh, nice job here staying busy off of his back. Nice offense from the bottom. Well, he's been good tonight, but he has his opponent in a roll of trouble. Such a sneaky head kick. He did not recognize it was coming high, and now he's got hurt bad. Oh, nice right hand. Oh, and there's a takedown attempt there, DC. I'm no analyst, but that one was pretty telegraphed, not his best effort. Yes, he may as well have sent a text message to his opponent saying, I'm going to shoot the moment. Oh, he's got a strike right there. I'm not sure how many more of these his opponent can take. Massive shot that he landed. Great job. That was landed clean. Misses again with the right strike lands there, and somehow his opponent's chin held up. His opponent's chin held up, but you do not want to be on the receiving end of those types of strikes. All right, he'll engage in a single collar tie. Now a takedown attempt. It is not there, and not a ton behind it. Oh, looked like he might have been in range, but misses with the kick. Right hand punch the clinch. Stuffs the takedown, no problem. Oh, you see him land the jab there. He's got the reach advantage. You might as well use it. Oh, body kick attempt here. It's no good. Well, he's more than content to work off of his back, DC, where he has been a magician in his UFC career. Five minutes in the books. All right, so that's the end of the round. The cut on the cheek is only getting worse. Thankfully, it is below the eye and not above it, but still a source of adversity for him here. All right, so let us now check out some of the action in that round, DC. There was a whole lot of it, including a stunner upstairs that nearly closed the show. It was a lot of action. It was back and forth action, but the big moment was that big strike to the head that landed that put him on wobbly legs and in survival mode. Luckily, he made it to the end of that round. Okay, you ready, round two? Ready? Let's go fight! Ooh, blocks the shot. All right, so he's landed some good shots tonight, but this is not a combo meal, right? No three-piece, no soda. It's one and done more often than not. John, don't you come to me without a combo. I want the whole platter. Give him the whole platter, young man. Put some punches together. Make this guy take the whole thing. Give him more than one strike. You have now found a set of punch. The jab is landing consistently. Find something that's going to go behind it. Oh, and he connects there. Pretty nice punch there. Great job finding the range to land those punches. Stuff the takedown, no problem. 
And they separate. Oh, and he caught the kick. Just out of range with the uppercut. Man, striking class is in session. Beautiful punch there. Great job landing. What a damaging punch. All right, he engages in the single collar tie. Now he's got the Muay Thai plug. Able to check the high kick. All right, single collar tie now. Oh. <laughs> Just misses there with the left. Oh, collar tie. Look at how he drives his knee right into his opponent's midsection. Just over three minutes to go. Oh, he landed a beautiful straight punch there, DC. He's got an edge in reach and certainly is making it count in this one. Oh, that is as big a strike as he has landed thus far tonight. Big, massive shot lands. Look at how tough his opponent is, though. Still standing, still in their fight. Got the single collar tie. Comes in close, controls his opponent's posture, and lands his nasty elbow. So a much different approach from him here in round two. Took him a while to find the range, get in his striking rhythm. He has found it here, and as a result, has really picked up the pace in round two. And they separate. That was good, man. Nice. Shots being landed on both sides here. Oh, single collar tie here. All right, so no surprise. Once again, we find ourselves here in this clinch situation. We'll see who can advance. Who's going to be the person to dictate the pressure? Who's going to control the engagements from this 50-50 position? hard in the pocket. And a nice job to stick with it there to complete the takedown. Back to the stand up now, both fighters upright. Keeping busy here on the clinch. He has a commitment to kick it tonight and it shows. Body kick. Oh, now he's got the tie plumb, Daniel. If you're on the other side, what are you trying to do to get out of this potentially dangerous position? You got to start digging your shoulder to a side and then trying to shove an underhook. You cannot. So nicely done with the trip there. All right, he's trying to control posture here. Now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. All right, working inside his opponent's guard here. You cannot sit in these jiu-jitsu guys' guard. And you can't have one arm in, one arm out. Guys will start throwing up legs, chasing triangles. Watch the guillotine. He might get a finish here. Oh, look at this. Jumps over in the side mount to try to counter the guillotine. Maybe going with that Von Flute choke. I guess we should call him the call of the OSP at this point. Oh, and there's the horn at the end of the round. So the fighter was really caught in the submission there just as the horn sounded. Safe to say he was saved by the bell there. So back to the stools they go. 60 seconds to recover here. We're going to fight on, ladies and gentlemen. Another round coming up. All right, a lot of high-level striking action in that last round. Daniel, take us through it, if you will. Tit for tat. Who has the best chin. It seemed as though they were looking for that answer. Both guys took risk. What a fantastic round. Faith in your strike. This guy can't strike with you. Third round underway. 
Look at how he turns his hip into that leg. Kick. And he connects with the punch there. Oh, a little single collar tie there. Well, he hasn't really showed it. That's a nice straight punch there. Now we'll see if he can follow it up. What do you follow up a great punch like this with? I'm excited to see what happens. Holding on to him here, not really doing too much, perhaps just looking to recover. Ooh, big shot lands. Trying to establish that jab. Oh, that's a big hook to the chin. Takedown defense holds oh, up. Oh, that was a big takedown. Is this the one that's going to break him? Oh! Not recognizing this right now. He's got to recognize that he's out. Side control now, DC. A lot of options at his disposal from here. Trying to pass the guard here, but a nice job by the bottom fighter defense. Bottom fighter did a fantastic job of following with his hips, making sure he blocked any attempt to get past his guard. All right, so inside the open guard of his opponent, got to be careful playing around for too long here on the ground with this guy. the speed on that reversal there. I mean, I know you can get out of some bad spots, but not with that type of speed. You cannot allow him to get leverage on the bottom. What a sweep. Oh, so an interesting decision there is he decides to stand up and relinquish the biggest shot that he's landed all night. A massive uppercut lane. Oh, that's a nice strike. Oh, lands another beautiful strike to the body, really starting to connect at will when it comes to work in the body, and especially effective doing Take down, cut take down, cut over and over. Here in these takedowns. Oh! Oh, wow, oh! There it is. Strong bottom work here, staying busy. Working off of his back here. Looks like he may try to hip escape. Crazy accuracy and efficiency with these ground and pound strikes here. And if you're the opponent, you've got to intelligently defend or the referee's going to stop. you got to defend. But you can see him now starting to gain posture and the intensity at which he's throwing these ground strikes is starting to improve. It's starting to elevate because he knows that he can get the finish. Under two minutes in our third and final round. All right, half guard position here. We'll see what he can do with it. A lot of weapons at his disposal from this dominant position. Oh, man. I feel for a wrestler, this is the most dominant position in all of fighting because wrestlers love control. Right. And to have your upper body free and your leg able to hold your opponent in position, it is like striking gold. Build your posture, throw your punches, big damage, but then always control the far side underhook. This is a great position for a top fighter. All right, working inside the now open guard of his opponent. Uh-oh. Throwing up a triangle. The guy on his back is very good at submissions, and if he's not careful here, he's going to get stuck, and he will have to submit. Less than a minute to go to decide this one. Oh, nice work with the bottom. Tags him with the punch. Rubber guard for him now, DC. Some people believe this is nothing more than a stall tactic. What do you think the offensive fighter is trying to do here? He needs to regain his posture, right? He needs to shove that foot down from around his neck, shove it down, build your base, get that arm free, and then get back to work trying to advance position to your ground and pound. Right. If you play in there, you can find yourself in a lot of danger if you're not careful. And a nice job at least staying upright on that. All right, 20 seconds to go in the round. Overhand right, swing and a miss. Big strike lands. Big strike lands. Well, now he looks to try to chase down that finish.
the official decision is in, it resides with Bruce Buff. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for decision. All three judges score the contest. 30-27. Played the winner by unanimous decision, Kevin the Trailblazer! Oh!